Andy, how many mm. holds have you done in patient's heads before? Um, more than a thousand holes in patient's heads. Okay, that's good, that's good. And how many, um, how much time does it take you to do one? One hole, uh, 20, 30 seconds-ish. Okay. And how much do you think time they used to, that used to take in old ages? Oh, with the drill, minutes, many, half an yeah. hour, I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe longer. Yeah, maybe longer. <laughs> okay, and you think that, have you ever thought that would be a relationship between the holes in the patient's heads and the bird's poop? The bird's poop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay, so we'll talk about this today. We'll be talking about the trifine or trepanning or drilling holes in the head. This is Mohammed. This is Adi. This is the Neurosurgeon channel. And this is the only place where you find two neurosurgeons talking to you about everything about the brain and spine. So trepanning is something that was done for thousands of years back to the ages of uh, China, ancient China, ancient Greece, and but it was brought to attention to the modern world in about 1800. And what happens is that in 1800, the the farmers relied mainly on natural fertilizers, okay. and that was abundant in areas in South America, where basically there was um, uh, layers and layers of guano that was piled up uh, there, and um, so that's where the bird, bird poop comes in. That's oh, it. Okay. Yeah. And then basically all the supply that goes to Europe and the US um, as a fertilizer came from there. And because of a lot of the civil war in 1860 in the US, and also some international incidents which led to Peru kind of saying that we might cut the supply in the pipeline. Right. At this stage. Uh, Abraham Link Lincoln said that he needs a solution and basically he thought about sending a delegation to Peru to solve this problem. And in about 1863, he sent a delegation and, that, and the head of that delegation was some, a person called Squire and he's the, kind of the main character in this story. So Squire went there, he spent about five months solving this problem, he solved it and then after that he sent his wife back to the US and he spent about 18 months after that because he was interested in collecting artifacts and antiquities and so on. I respect that uh, work-life balance there. Five yeah. months work <laughs> and then 18 months doing what he actually yeah. uh, wants to do. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Then at the end of this journey, he uh, met a um, lady called um, Sinora Zintino and she was a um, um, kind of collector of fine art and antiquities and she gave him a gift which was a skull and that skull had a hole. Mm -hmm. That was interesting, it came from the um, Inca or from the uh, Peru basically and when he looked into that he thought that it's, it doesn't look like um, an injury to the skull, it looked mm -hmm. like a skull that was done by someone, um, you know, like a man-made uh, hole in the skull. So that was interesting and, and he was curious about that. So what happened next is that I think Squire took the skull back to New York and he showed it to people and was like, look what these guys have been doing, drilling holes in their heads in uh, South America. And unfortunately, sign of the times, they didn't believe that people outside of the Western world were able to do such a thing. Um, and they said, you know what, there's no way that these were holes drilled in the head back in, in Peru in the 1800s. And so Squire seemed like quite an ingenious guy, he found Broca. Uh, Broca is a very famous uh, neuroanatomist, neurophysiologist. Uh, he has a part of the brain around about here, called Broca's area, uh, named after him, which helps with speech. And Broca kind of forced people to think about things a little bit differently and say, you know what, it's looking more and more like that people in previous civilizations a long time ago were able to drill holes in people's heads. Not only that, they would survive. And I think this was a kind of difficult thing for those guys to understand, Absolutely. mainly because when they were doing it in New York or the Western world, uh, the risk of you dying from such a procedure was about 90%. Yep. And the main thing was an infection. And so they had a bit of a ego pill to swallow that other people could do it. Uh, previous civilizations were a bit more advanced than they were currently. And over time, once this became accepted, then they looked further and further back into archaeological databases and saw that this practice of trepanning or trefining has been going on for at least 10,000 years, um, so a long, long time.
So now, nowadays, we used to do a lot of holes in the, in the patient's heads, and we use a lot of technology now. We have mm -hmm. the electric drills where yeah. we, you know, it's very easy to do and very quick. But it's very interesting to see how they used to do that in, you know, old ages. And what happens is that most, most of the patient will probably have been injured. They have, you know, a um, skull fracture yeah. and they have to open it up. And basically what you used to do, they, they push the patient's heads in between their knees and they're basically to keep it stable. So imagine that patient sitting in that position, that's very difficult. Yeah. And then what they do is they get a coconut and they break it and then they put some juice of the coconut on their head, which probably I think was used as um, antiseptic or um, antiseptic medication. Yeah. Um, once that's done, they cut the uh, skull with a shark tooth or okay. sharp instrument yeah. and then they used to kind of, um, there are different tools that was used at that point and it's kind of evolved after time. Um, but the, the basic concept was basically to, to use a sharp thing to scrape the skull or to open open it. It takes a bit of time. Mm -hmm. I think it used to take, for the kids, they sometimes used to do that in about a few minutes but in older people yeah. uh, where the skull is more mature and thick that probably takes about 50 minutes and you can imagine that their hands would be you know, very tired after doing this. Yeah, I think uh, Broca tried to show that in children it can be done by using a piece of glass at yeah. a child's skull and it took him like four minutes and then he tried it, like you said, on an adult skull and it took him like an hour and his yeah. hand was hurting. Uh, so big difference between the two. Yeah. Then once that's done, they take the part of the skull that is kind of fractured or if they want to open the skull, generally speaking, they take that piece of the skull and take it out and then while they're doing this the patient used to either uh, you know uh, smoke tobacco or they drink some alcohol and basically Don't just to them. make them yeah. <laughs> um, you know ease the pain and um, make them less awake basically and the also general anesthetic yes yeah <laughs> and they used to put some lens in the patient's ears and just basically not to hear the sound of scraping or you know yeah it's interesting because we you know we drill holes in people's heads when they're awake sometimes in a much more controlled environment yeah um and i always tell them you know what it's going to sound strange uh i don't know what it sounds like but i said <laughs> people it's going to sound like very odd feeling because the sound goes through your skull through your ear and into your hearing area, but no one actually has ever complained that it was that yeah. loud, which was uh, it's pretty yeah, interesting. Definitely, it's a weird sensation that you're feeling someone is drilling your head. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it was it, it was never like a problem with for the patients. Um, then once they're happy, they close the skin and they close that with a needle and with a, a banana leaves basically, and then they put leaves on the surface of the head and just to help with the pain and also to help with the healing of the skull. That's pretty impressive for me to be honest, um, given worked. that was done survived. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the big question is uh, why were people doing this uh, so long ago? And uh, you may have heard, I heard it before I read about this, that trepanning or trephining was done to release uh, evil spirits uh, from people's skulls. Uh, which I guess kind of makes sense depending upon your beliefs in the supernatural uh, or not. And Broca thought this as well and it was very popularized mm -hmm. uh, at the time. Uh, however, Squire had a different thought and maybe because he was the guy on the ground actually digging stuff up and knew about the cultures. And he thought that um, maybe it's because of a treatment after an injury. Uh, if someone had uh, a blow to the head, maybe they were in a conflict, uh, then some of the bone could get depressed inside. And then the answer was to drill around it or to find and take that bone out. Um, and there's a bit of, you know, concrete academic evidence to that is that the majority of skulls that have been found that have been trophined, all the holes are on the left hand side. So most people right handed, so they've been hit by a right handed person. So although we think that maybe this was done for beliefs to help people get better from spirits, it may have been a much more practical uh, operation done after trauma to the head. Although, as Addy said, you know, they used to use that to take the evil spirits out, but actually there are some people in recent time, in about 1965, where they uh, were advocating the uh, use or doing a voluntary trepanning, ter which is... On themselves? You know, on themselves, right, which okay. is kind of crazy, to be honest. We wouldn't advise that, definitely. Oh. And um, there was um, a famous guy called Bart Hughes, which who um, drilled a hole in his head, and he thought that that's 
probably a mechanism that he can increase the blood supply in the brain right. and that would make him better, more productive. And it uh, work? Uh, I'm not sure, probably <laughs> not, because... <laughs> um, yeah, so um, never do this. No. But uh, as Mo said, there's a lot of people, um, you can probably find it, have drilled their own holes in their head because they think it's going to help them in recent times and they're still around. Um, but yeah, definitely not one that the neurosurgeons would advise.